Welcome, welcome. Welcome back to chapter two of Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. This is the vocabulary of comics where McCloud gets pretty abstract. In fact, that is the central theme of chapter two. This is this idea of abstraction and iconography. So let's start off with this very famous painting or sign or symbol of a pipe. And he says that, what kind of image is this? He says, oh, this is not a pipe. This is a painting of a pipe. But then he says, no, it's not a painting of a pipe. And this is where McLeod, as usual, gets playful. As he says, it's actually a printed copy of a drawing of a painting of a pipe. So he's trying to get us to understand how complex this is going on right now. This is an abstraction of an abstraction of an abstraction of an abstraction. And right, go back to it. It's four times, right? It's a pipe, painting, drawing, printed copy, right? And you're actually probably looking at this on a screen, so it's actually probably even five. So that's my favorite part to get of this chapter is sort of the, the playfulness. Now, why is he talking about this? Why is he saying this? Well, because his main idea is to get to the central idea of icons and abstraction and that icons need some sense of participation from the reader or the viewer so let's take a look here all right he says these symbols right are not ideas they're icons as he'll say here this is an ohm this is a cross this is a, a yin yang this is a menorah this is an anarchy symbol this is a peace sign but those are not the ideas, right? This is the representation, the iconography, the icon, the abstraction of those ideas. And so it requires our participation in it. That is the central idea here. So it requires us, right, to go splat. We have to see that this is a sound. We have to see that this is a sign that makes us stop. We have to make the motion between these two images. And this is actually probably the most clever thing he says here. This is not, these are not separate moments. These are actually very separate images, right? These are two separate panels with a gutter, going back to uh, the previous lecture, with a gutter, and that we have to create that meaning. And so why is it so important? Well, because, let's scroll past it, he says that it requires us to participate in the meaning of all of this. Here it is. Words are totally abstract icons. That is, they bear no resemblance to the real McCoy, right? So he's saying that, but in, but in pictures, the level of abstraction varies. And so where does it come from? Well, it comes from us. I just want to point out before I continue, this is one of my favorite silly moments where you see reality this way, and there's an icon of Scott McCloud. And then there's more icons and then they're all thinking there and there's a bunch there it's sort of a little moment that he doesn't really call attention to and you know this is the reality this way so it's a fun moment anyways back to abstraction so he's here sort of with a photorealistic image and then he abstracts a little bit then he abstracts even more and then he abstracts it even more but he spent the next several pages explaining that we fill in these gaps for this particular image. We don't need a whole lot of filling in for this one. Less, less, and less. And so we can, more and more people can identify with this abstraction, right? This is a white man, right? Then it becomes more cartoony. And finally, it's just a simple face. And he says, why are we so involved? And he's sort of doing a, a, a pun on on prayer here, where he has his icons praying to various comics, right? This is a smiley face, Charlie Brown. This is um, Mickey Mouse, Bart Simpson, and a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, for any of you who don't recognize those icons. He says, it requires us. It requires us, the people, um, the readers, to actually participate in this. And he says, this is important because we need to be able to have some some sense of abstraction and so i'm going to go down here and all the way. okay so 
he says this is probably the best place where he goes to goes to this idea of abstraction right where you have all of these little symbols i always think these sort of look like little islands in the ocean but he adds an eye to it and he says you can't help but not see the eyes he says but no one would ever mistake this for this but he says what's then the power of this particular abstraction well when we have that we're able to see things that aren't always there so we can see this is a face we can see this is a face right two eyes mouth nose two eyes smiley face sort of a nose there i, I found this one a little bit harder to see but then he says we make this world over in our image and we can see participation from the reader in this by making it into a face and then he goes on some of the this mask tangent as those of you who are, have told me over email you're like i didn't quite get that well we can talk about that in class but he says it requires a mental image of our own face to have a conversation with somebody else so these two people are talking they have a mental image of each other that probably also reflects their own self-perception of their own face. And then he gives us an example right here. And so I don't want to go over too much longer than previously, but um, we're at about six and a half minutes. So he says, I believe this is the primary cause of our childhood fascination with cartoons, though other factors such as universal identification, simplicity, and the childlike features of many cartoon characters also play a part. So what is going on here? He's saying that, you know, these cartoons and these abstractions can really suck us into reality and get us to identify with them because, you know, everybody or many people can identify with this face. They can identify with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, with Kermit the Frog, with um, Squ SpongeBob SquarePants, right? And he says, look at this. These two are a great juxtaposition if he went over with this more detailed you would get almost get distracted by um, scott mcleod if this were the more detailed picture of him instead you identify a little bit more with this image and so you listen to what he's saying and you become more involved so that involvement is key because it goes to the end piece. i'm going to skip over a lot of this because i think this is pretty self-explanatory on page 59, I think. Sorry. No, I went way too far. Apologies. All right. So now, why is this all? All why is all of this relevant to comic books? Well, he says that there are two essential mediums that people identified with. The first was film, right? So people can sort of see themselves in film, right? And the second is that people can see themselves in comics or sequential art. And that's where he's going to leave us with is this idea of there are two basic ways that require our participation in this abstraction. The first is television, right? We do this all the time and in film, right? It's also that one. The other is comics. And so we can see ourselves and become emblazoned in this abstraction and therefore we can tell a story and before i leave us i also want to go over um the giant pyramid because sometimes that's hard to understand here we go all right i'm going to shrink this a little bit so everybody can see it all right so if i had to summarize it you have this reality, or at least reality is in quotation marks because it's supposed to be a realistic depiction. This is more just sort of raw meaning. And then we have abstraction, right? These are shapes and symbols. And in order for these three things to come together, right, it requires our brain and our visual acuity to be able to put these things together and make meaning out of it. Now, there aren't too many mediums that do this. And as I noted, one of them is film, television, and the other one requires, of course, comics. And so that is where I'm going to leave us with this idea of abstraction and thinking about how comics abstract 
our sense of meaning and rely on our participation to create meaning. So let's think about that as one avenue for discussion today. Let's think about how comics create abstraction and make us think sort of between the different panels and fill in the gaps and require our participation in the making of meaning. All right, I will talk to you all soon.